Hello and welcome to the student call application process. In this video, I will give you a quick overview of the student application platform. I will show you how to create an account, how to fill out an application, and finally, how to apply and reorganize your project selection. Let's start with the student application platform. In the top right corner of the screen, you will find in the navigation bar the option to switch languages, either from French to English or from English to French. On the other side of the screen, at the top left corner, you will find four buttons that will help you navigate the platform. The first button is the welcome button. In this section, you will find the information concerning the deadline, the general eligibility criteria of MyTax, and the documents you will need to provide to submit your application. Next, we have the projects button. In this section, you will be able to read a summary of the projects that are available to students. By using the different search filters, you will be able to find several projects that revolve around your interest. Let's say you study psychology, you speak English, and you're interested in projects in the province of British Columbia. You would put that information in the search filters and see what gets generated from it. From there, you will be able to find a list of projects that align more with your studies or your interests. Please remember that you must log into the platform before being able to apply to any of these projects. The third button will be the register button. In this section, you will be creating your account to access the application page. If you already have an existing account, please do not create another. While you're entering your details, make sure to read the requirements for each box. After you have submitted your information, a link will be sent out to the email that you have provided. That link is used to validate your account. If you didn't receive the link in the next 30 minutes, please check your spam or your junk folder. The last button will be the login button. As the name suggests, this section is to access your account and to start or continue your application. Next, we have the application page. Once you have logged into your account, you will no longer see the register or login button. Instead, you will now see the application button. On this page, you will have to complete all eight sections in order to complete your application. Each section will be considered complete once the red triangle that is at the right side of the tab becomes a green check mark. The first section will ask you about your personal information. You will see general questions such as given name, surname, email address. You will also be asked about the country or region that you are enrolled in. Once selected, you will see a blue application box pop up. In that box, you will find additional requirements for your country. Make sure to read the information provided in that box carefully for additional eligibility criteria for your country. Now, what to do if I don't have a surname or a last name in my passport? The platform will let you leave that box empty. In that case, you can put a simple dot where your surname or last name would be. And what do I do if I don't have a valid passport at the time of applying for the program? Don't worry. You can just provide the passport information that you currently have. If you get selected, you can always modify that information later. The second box will be about your education. You will need to be careful when selecting your home institution from the list that is provided. If you don't see your institution on the list, please refer back to the blue box. It will provide you with a link where you can check the list of eligible institutions. You will also see a box asking about an English or French proficiency exam. That question is optional. Only countries that require their students to provide a language test score will have to answer that question. The third section is going to be about your background and research interest. This will be your chance to impress your future professors with your skills by highlighting your awards, publications, and other notable achievements. Maybe you already mentioned this information in your CV, but couldn't go into details. Now you will be able to provide more information that might help you set yourself apart from your peers. The fourth tab is going to be asking you about your experience with MyTax. It will first ask you how you heard of the company, and then it will ask you if you will be able to respect the time frame in which the internship is taking place. The fifth section is the academic reference. 
In this section, you must submit a letter from a professor who can write about your knowledge and skills and to recommend you for this internship. There are two ways to submit a reference letter. You can invite your professor to submit the letter confidentially to MyTax through a link. If you or your professor have made a mistake, you can always reset the reference information. It will erase all the information related to that reference, including the letter that was previously sent by your professor. You can also submit a reference letter by uploading it yourself directly on your application. If you selected the wrong document, you can always upload a new one. The reference letter doesn't need to be written by a professor at your current university. However, the professor must have supervised or co-supervised your work, it can speak on behalf of your academic and research experience, and is able to provide a signed letter on the university letterhead. It is important that the letter is submitted to your application before the deadline. Without a reference letter, your application is incomplete and will not be considered, so talk to your professor early. The sixth section is the acknowledgement. To proceed with your application, you must answer yes to both questions here. So make sure to read this section carefully. The seventh section is the project section, but we will get back to it later. The last section is the document section. This is where you will be uploading your CV and your transcript. The transcript that you will be uploading must show your academic history since you started your undergrad or combined undergrad master's program. We would very much appreciate it if you could combine all your transcripts into one file. However, you do have the opportunity to upload more than one file. And finally, the project section. Previously under the student application platform, when you clicked on the projects button, you could only view the projects that were available for the 2023 student call. Now you have the opportunity to apply for the projects that you are interested in. The projects that you select have to be at least in three different provinces, or this section will be incomplete. Keep in mind that you can only select a maximum of seven projects and a minimum of three projects, so choose wisely. Remember, the search tool and the filters are there to help narrow down your search. You will find the projects that you have applied for in the project section of the application page. You can change the order of the projects by clicking on the blue arrows that indicate up and down. You can also take off projects that you are no longer interested in by clicking on the red cross. The first project on your list will be your most preferred. You can always change the list of projects or rearrange the order in which they are in. When you're done, always click on the blue button saying Confirm Project List Change to save your changes. Once you see a green check mark on all the tabs and a complete application status at the top of your screen, you have successfully completed your application. There is no Submit button. As long as your application is marked as complete by the deadline, it will automatically be submitted. If you wish to complete your application another day, you can always save the information that is currently on the platform. You can do so by clicking on the blue Save button that is on the left side of the screen, just above the Personal Information tab, as well as on the bottom of the screen, at the end of the application form. By clicking on the question marks above the empty fields, you will see what information you will need to give in order to answer the question. The red writing at the bottom of a field isn't to indicate that information is missing, but to provide you with more clarification on how to answer the question. If the writing is in black and highlighted in red, it signifies that one of the answer boxes has been left blank. You will need to go back and give an answer. And that was an overview on how to apply for the Global Link Research Internship student call. Please review the student application tab on the Global Link Research Internship webpage and answers to the frequently asked questions on our FAQ page if you have any questions. If you don't see the answer to your question, feel free to email us at helpdesk. Please keep in mind that we do receive high volumes of emails during the student call and our responses may be delayed. Thank you for watching and good luck with your application.